Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me tonight. We are going to be doing a really fun painting. This is a palette knife painting. I've done a couple of these before and they are really great for beginners. Um, you use very simple tools. You don't even really need a palette knife. You could use a credit card or something like that for it. So um, I hope it'll be pretty short tonight, maybe about an hour long. Um, not a lot of uh, fine detail in it. So it's pretty simple, I think. Got my husband, Mark, here. Hey there, everybody. And he's going to be manning chat. So if you are live with us and you have a question for me while I'm painting, you can ask in all caps. And he will try to get those to me as I work. So uh, my color palette uh, is mostly blues and greens, but you could adapt it to whatever colors you wanted. Um, well, when I say greens, I mean turquoise. Um, I've got cadmium red medium, burnt sienna, cadmium yellow medium. This is um, unbleached titanium, titanium white, and I got some blue in it while I was doing my examples. So hopefully that will make a difference. I think I got it all out, hopefully. <laughs> Uh, this is more titanium white. Uh, this is a premix color called uh, light blue permanent, but you can use um, thalo blue plus some white to get something similar to this. This is cerulean blue, thalo blue green shade. This is ultramarine blue, carbon black, any black will do. Uh, this is light ultramarine blue. This is just ultramarine blue plus some white that's premixed. Teal, uh, which you can mix yourself with thalo blue and thalo green and some white. And then we're back to the start. So, um, like I said, any kind of blues, greens, any of those. So don't feel like if you have don't have these exact colors, uh, you can still make it work with whatever you have. We've got a sponsor for tonight's video. I'm really excited about our sponsor because they I love their service. Audible is a leading provider of premium digital spoken audio information and entertainment with an unmatched selection of audiobooks. If you've watched my show before, you know that I love to read, but with my busy schedule, I'm not often able to stop and pick up a book. So with Audible service, I can enjoy a good audiobook while leaving my hands free to paint and get some work done around the house. I was actually listening to a book today while I was preparing for our video. Uh, I've got the book by Sophie Kinsella. Her new book is called My Not So Perfect Life. It's actually pretty, really fun. She's hilarious. If you haven't read her before, you'd, uh, if you like humor, you'd probably like her. Uh, so if you're interested in checking out Audible's service for yourself, Audible is offering our viewers a free audiobook with a 30-day trial membership. Just go to audible.com slash Angela Fine Art to browse their selection, download a free title, and start listening. It's that easy. The link to the 30-day free trial is down in the description below. Let's get started. I've got my canvas panel here. This is a pre-gessoed canvas panel. Um, well, it's actually a MDF board, um, gesso board it's called. And I'm going to use that. I find that when I'm using my um, palette knives that a firm um, board is works better than a canvas because uh, it picks up the paint a little bit easier. It doesn't uh, canvas can tend to bow uh, and move when you're trying to scrape the paint onto it. So um, I find that these firm boards are a little bit better for that. How are you doing, honey? I'm doing really good. Really good? Okay. Yes. All right, well, let's get started. I think what I'm going to do first is just use a brush. Um, so any, any brush will do. You don't have to have anything special. I'm using my large uh, Princeton number 12 Bright here. And I'm just going to put some color down underneath the um, canvas so that we'll have something to paint on, on top of with our scraping and all that fun stuff with our palette knife. So uh, let's, let's start out with our sky here. And I'm going to grab some of this light ultramarine blue and maybe a little bit extra ultramarine just to darken it up. And we're just going to start up here at the top and I'm going to go fairly dark with the background and then we'll add our lighter colors on top of it. It'll give us a good base for some of the lighter colors to go on top. And I'm going to go down to about uh, two-thirds with this so I'll fill up most of the top sections 
with this color. And as I get down to the bottom, I'll add a little bit more white to my paint so that it softens out. The horizon line tends to be a little bit lighter, especially in the ocean. Well, if you look at pictures, there's a lot of a lot of times there's like a white haze or a light hazy color coming off of the ocean in the distance in the sky. So we'll put that in there. And then we'll just work up some of our color up into here and streak it. Honestly, this painting is so um, kind of abstract and what's well, not abstract necessarily. I don't know what the word for it would be. Um, impressionistic? Kind of, yeah. Kind of impressionistic. Um, imperfect is another good term. You know, just kind of uh, loose, loose and... You know, abstract means that you can't tell what it is, kind of. You know, it's like, what is that? So we can be, we can tell these are sailboats. Oh, okay. So that's it's my, not technically that's abstract. That's my painting then. <laughs> can't tell <laughs> what that you, is. Yeah. <laughs> that's what it's called when Mark paints. <laughs> right. They named it after me, abstract. <laughs> got it. Got it. I did not know that. Yeah, that that's makes great. sense. Makes sense. I can't we'll grab a little bit of the burnt sienna here and my phthalo blue. And I'm going to mix this kind of blue-green color. And maybe add a little bit of my ultramarine blue, too. Just kind of... Yeah, that'll work. And we'll use that. It's going to be nice and dark. I might add a little bit of white to that because it is kind of pretty overpowering. And if you are concerned about your horizon line being completely straight, you can use a ruler, set along there and help guide you, or um, you can tape it off. I'm not going to worry too much about it since we're kind of doing a more sloppy version of... I'm going to grab the cerulean blue now and do some of that brighter blue down here. Um, the reason I used the burnt sienna is it kind of neutralized the color a little bit, it'll make it a little bit grayed. The the color as it gets uh, down towards the horizon line is a little bit more grayed and a little bit less saturated, so that'll just indicate that. I can't remember what I was saying now, but oh well. And Let's of course, this. I was paying attention. I, and it, <laughs> of course, you were. You were talking about painting. <laughs> really? Yeah, uh, I'm pretty sure about horizon lines and painting and. Something about blues, blue colors. Blues. Something like that. Got it. Well, my my horizon line up here is a little bit high. So I'm going to clean that out. Grab a little bit of the white. And I'm just going to go back over that just right there. Using the edge of my brush tends to be easier to draw a straight line too, I find. So it's harder to tell when I've got it straight flat. I'm going to tilt it. Oops, yeah, it's lying. Okay. That's good. I'm going to let that go to Mark here. He's going to blow dry that for me really quick. Really quickly? Really quickly, yep. <laughs> and I'm going to try to find a towel for my hands here. So I'll put that back down so you can see it while we're... Sorry, this is the joy of live TV. You're going to have to... If you uh, are painting at home, having a hairdryer handy is very helpful. Uh, you just don't want to get your paints too hot. So um, just keep it so uh, about six inches away from your canvas or whatever you're working on um, and just you know brush it back go back and forth with it don't hold it in one spot over your paints they can bubble or do weird things uh, if you get it too too close I've never really had it ha happen but it it's happened in my kids class before where they've kind of gotten the hairdryer too close so I had to supervise that pretty carefully but it does quick uh, make the drying time a little bit faster for acrylics because they dry quickly but I'm impatient I don't like to have to wait around so you good is it done okay
good enough. Yep, thank you. Look at that spot right oh, there. Oh, he got hurt. See that? <laughs> Pain and suffering. <laughs> I'm following a suit. <laughs> You're going to turn me into the, what is it, OSHA? OSHA, exactly. <laughs> These working conditions. Okay, sorry, honey. The exposed wires on that hair dryer look scary, too. <laughs> All right, I'm going to use a uh, flat palette knife. Um, if you don't have one, you can use a credit card. Uh, that'll work just as well. And we're just going to scrape some lines in on our canvas here and just make sure it's nice and dry. Um, so I'm going to grab, I'm just going to scoop up some paint on here. Uh, I've got white, and I'm going to grab some of this light blue permanent. Maybe grab a little bit of the... Ultramarine blue, and just slightly mix them. I'm not going to fully mix them on my thing here. It's going to be hard to do this in this and leave it square. I'm just going to hold it and turn it. Sorry, guys. I like to keep it flat if I can, but it's just not going to work for this. So I'm going to scrape it, grab a little bit of the un ultramarine blue. Get some darker. That's going to be a really loud sound too. You may want to cut the cut the sound a little bit. I don't know if that's oh, no. disturbing it, anybody. It makes people feel like they're here with us. Okay. There's a little bit nails on chalkboard sounding. Sorry. I'll try. This is actually so smooth. It's working really well. Um, scraping on nicely. So. And this the canvas panel um, if you're using a canvas panel it have a little bit of texture this is completely smooth so it's just gliding on like butter and this is really is a lot like spreading um, frosting or butter or something like that I'm just kind of flattening out my knife so that it's making all these really interesting shapes you just can't get by using a brush and I guess I could try, but take a long time. <laughs> okay, somebody's asked, what kind of canvas panel are you using? This is a Dick Blick. Um, sorry, I left a long pause between it. <laughs> <laughs> Awkward pause there. Awkward pause. <laughs> Hey, Blick Studios. Down, yeah, Blick, <laughs> exactly. Link is in the description. Yeah, it's down in the disc. Well, I don't have the exact one in the description, but I found okay. one that was similar. So, right. yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> a little awkward. Sorry and, for the kids listening. I, that wasn't what I was saying. And you're just putting on titanium, just a company. titanium white. It's, just, it's their student panels, it's called. What? You're titanium white. Titanium? Well, no, I'm grabbing no? different colors. I've okay. got a little bit of the... Lighter blues and, and a little bit of ultramarine blue in there too. And it's a heavy body, correct? Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, it's a heavy body acrylic. Yeah, the heavy bodies will work a little bit better than the um, thinner paints for this particular type of thing. Okay, so I'm going to leave that and we'll start down. I'm going to grab some of the cerulean blue and mix a little bit of white into that. We'll use this light blue permanent too white and we'll also use the teal but I'm going to start just by kind of setting my brush down or my not brush my knife down um, I find that I'm using a bigger plate today just to kind of give me a little bit more control but I find that if I kind of press the paint off of it a little bit and then and then scoop it I get like a little bead right there and then I can kind of lay my my knife down sort of at a diagonal slight diagonal because I don't want too much of it coming off at one point at one time but and it I can kind of do these horizontal scraping and I just want to make sure that these are very horizontal I don't want them to be tipped um, the the waves closer to us can be kind of tipped um, you can maybe see a little bit of movement but as they go farther away they look they look like straight lines so that'll keep our horizon line looking correct by keeping these lines straight 
the can. And as I get down, I can go a little bit wider with them. Lay my knife down a little flatter. I'm just pressing that off. Let's grab some of this teal too. Get some of that teal on there. I'll scrape all of that good stuff on the knife. I, how, how did I get yellow on my finger? <laughs> this is a messy one, just to let you know. Like my hands were a mess. And well, obviously my knife is a mess too. I must have stuck my finger in it when I was loading my <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> like what the heck? Welcome to the professional painting tutorial. Yeah, yeah. We're this sure is real. Messy. This is the real deal here. Um, Are we doing finger painting also? Julia Childs of I could. <laughs> it it wouldn't be much different, I don't think, at this point. Okay. Ooh, I like that teal blue in there. Okay, so let's kind of lay out some of these. I don't want to do too much detail right yet because I'm going to put my boats in here. So I'm just kind of laying this out though so some of this is behind them up in the distance. And as I get down toward the bottom, I'm almost laying it flat like I did up here, but I'm obviously keeping it horizontal. Let's grab some of that cerulean blue and get some nice bright blue in there. This is very messy and a lot of people don't like palette knives because it's hard to control and that's true. You kind of have to let your uh, let what happens happen when you get here and it, with the paint knife. I mean there's there's parts of it that you can kind of control but a lot of it is just kind of trial and error and just sort of playing with the paint. Um, nice thing about acrylics is you can always cover over if you make a big mistake. Um, and if you're concerned and you really, really like a layer that you've put down here and you want to be sure that you don't, you know, like you're afraid to mess it up by the next layer that you're going to do, what you can do is dry it completely. And then if you do have a little mistake, you can usually just wipe it off. Um, even if with it being this thick, it might, um, might tint the color around it a little bit, but you can still should be able to wipe off some of it. So... There we go. You ready for a question? Sure. <clears throat> okay. Somebody's asked is, uh, what is your favorite type of painting? And what is your favorite thing to paint? I'm going to say flowers, probably your favorite thing to paint. Yeah, flowers. Yeah. That's definitely probably and up so there. I'm guessing asking about your painting means a genre or style, I'm, I'm guessing. Um. You know, I do I do a lot of different kinds of painting. If you look at my, you know, look through my thing, I've, especially this month, I've had everything but, you know, from like fairly, you know, fairly real uh, Lily last weekend to the finger paint, you know, the, the uh, Q-tip paintings that we did, you know. Um, I, I do like florals because they are a little bit freer, but... Uh, when I do my fine art paintings, they they tend to be more on the realistic side, like the lily was. Um, but I do really enjoy the freedom of this kind of painting. It's not what I tend to do for my gallery work. Uh, I don't know why, but I, you know, <laughs> I just it, maybe it's too easy. I feel like I'm cheating if I <laughs> try to put this. <laughs> but uh, yeah, my uh, my. My style tends towards realism, but I do like to have, um, I do like to have a painterly style. So I don't go all the way into realism. I want it to look like a painting. So, you know, there's a element of realism, but it's also, you know, got visible brush strokes or different things like that, that make you know that it's a painting. That's kind of important to me too in my fine art paintings and stuff. You know, if I wanted a realism, I would just take a photograph. I, you know, I mean, honestly, because I can do it better and faster. 
um, I think they're cool. I just, it's not for me. You know, it's just not my, it's kind of, to me, it's like, what's the point? That's my personality, though. I'm just kind of like a little bit more practical. Stuff like that, I guess. Okay, so I'll add a little bit more of the cerulean blue. Felt like it was getting a little bit dark. I like that, I think. Um, let's do a little bit more up in the sky here. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I'm going to grab... I'm going to get a different palette knife now. Let me grab my kind of more rounded one here. And I'm going to grab some of this white. I'm just going to kind of tap it onto the bottom of this palette knife. And I'm going to use it and tap in some cloud type shapes. There we go. Just a few little kind of more specific clouds out of these. Just a few. Tapping, kind of using the tip of it to sort of draw the top of it, uh, maybe. And then tapping out to get. But yeah, the thing, the thing with this is you just kind of have to go with whatever happens. You can't get too caught up in it trying to get it to look just like mine because it's not going to look just like mine. I, even if I did, my, this one's not going to look like the one I did earlier today. Even if I tried my hardest, it's still not going to look the same because it's just, you know, paint's going to catch a different way and I might have loaded this a little bit more thickly or a little bit less thick, thickly with paint. Um, so you just kind of have to be a little bit flexible, let the, let it... Uh, let it take its take shape however it wants to. I'm using some of the darker blue here. It's a ultramarine, light ultramarine. I'm going to add a little bit of that over the top of some of my scrapings too. I might even, I do have a tiny bit of yellow in. Let's see if I can get some yellow to work in here. I don't want it to take over the sky, but I do want a little bit of yellow, so I'm going to grab some of that and try to... It's just making green. I'm going to wipe this off. Move that out of the way. We'll scoop up some white over here. Just a teeny tiny bit of yellow will do. See, it will tint that white really dark. So I'm getting a little bit of that on there. Use a little bit of that here and there just to give it another color happening in the sky. Go over the top of some of this white with it. Okay. You can do as much as or as little detail as you want up here in the sky, but doesn't have to be, it's not going to be our main focal point, so it doesn't have to be super detailed. We want the detail to be in the, in the sails and things. I think that looks pretty good. I might use the edge and just do a couple small ones right here along the horizon line. Just kind of tapping the horizon line clouds will be very thin and, and low. That helps. Okay. Good deal. Let's wipe that off. You're going to need a lot of paper towels for these. They take, <laughs> they are messy, 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 messy. Okay. So at this point, I could probably blow dry it again, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to keep on going and hope for the best. I did not, <laughs> I did not blow dry mine when I was doing the example. So we'll just, we'll just hope that we can get it. Uh, going without it making too much of a mess. Let me wipe that off so it doesn't dry on there. If you do have paint dried on here, you can get it off with some alcohol. Just uh, well, not not the kind you drink, but rubbing alcohol. Okay, not bourbon. Or no, don't use your good scotch. Vodka or scotch. No. 100 year old scotch. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that might not go over well. Just some, just some regular rubbing alcohol will do. Okay. Yep. Check. <laughs> 
If you are new to my channel, I'm sorry. Welcome. <laughs> we haven't <laughs> welcomed you yet. <laughs> we appreciate you joining us tonight. We are a family team here, obviously. Try to keep it uh, family friendly most of the time. It's for when I have uh, slips here. But we do our shows twice a week right now. And try to make painting fun, easy. I know it can be intimidating, and there's a lot of art police out there telling you how you should and shouldn't do your art. We just try to make it fun and accessible to everybody so you can enjoy it and not worry too much about uh, stressing out. I try to take the fear out of it for you, kind of give you some paintings that you can do and achieve achievable art. Okay, so I'm going to do one here, and I think I'm going to move over just to kind of change my composition up a little bit. I think I want to move this one over and this one over to maybe make a little bit more room between these two um, and move this one over slightly. I don't know. Just feel like the composition could uh, do with a little change. So I'm going to think I'm going to do the, the center line of this one straight down here. And I've mixed up some black and just a tiny bit of white. It's got a little bit of blue on there. And I'm going to use this. And you could use your other one too if you wanted to. I'm just going to use it to make a horizontal line for my sail, for this first sailboat. And notice I'm working from left to right this time. I'm doing it right <laughs> so I don't stick my hand in it. I'm actually remembered to do that this time, honey. I'm proud of you. Thank you. It's only taken 170 some on painting. Well, yeah. I, but just, we get there. Yes. As yeah. long as we keep improving each time. <laughs> exactly. Now, if you're left-handed, you may want to start on the right side. Probably. Well, I don't know, because you'd still be... Yeah, yeah, probably that side. Okay. All right, so I'm going to bring it down, and the, this boat's going to sit... Um, just above the halfway mark, probably at the third mark. So if you find your, if you split this water section into three parts, this one is going to set at the top of that third right in here. And I'm just going to kind of pull down. It'll mess with whatever paints underneath, but that's fine. They're, they're still drying, so we can move them around a little bit. I'm just going to use it kind of at an angle and just sort of tap in. Now if you were using a credit card you could cut it into a piece like this and use it the same way just to kind of use it and scrape. So don't feel like you have to go out and buy a set of palette knives. You can use other tools for these. Spoons, plastic spoons, plastic forks even to make you know different textures and things if you wanted to. Um, so I'm going to do the edges kind of pointed on either end and actually a little bit more on this end of the boat so just a little bit more probably made it a little bit long but that's all right try to make this part horizontal down here where it hits the water am i close enough do i need to zoom in at all are we good you know my feeling on that i'm gonna zoom in I'm so there we go. Hey, somebody uh, new has joined us, yes. and they want to know what would you recommend for them to go out and buy as far as starter paints? Like, what type of colors would be a good base to start with? I'm adding yellow to this, this the yellow from the sky, and I'm going to just tap in a little bit along the top of this boat um, while it's wet, just right there, to give a little highlight at the top edge. Uh, let me see. And then I want to hold on a sec. I'll get to that question. I just have to think right now. I'm not in okay. a good place to talk. All right. A second. We'll let you go. Thanks. Thanks. Do your thing. Okay. Uh, so this little one here, I want him over here. And he's going to be up higher than this one was. And he's actually going to be just like one width here. It's about an inch maybe. And I'm just going to. I'm going to tap that in horizontally. There's a there's a, a, a set of brushes that are down in the description, um, or a set of, um, not brushes, of paints 
by Liquitex Basics that are down in the description on Amazon. And um, those are what I had my kids' class start with. You know, it's a good beginner set. It gets you kind of started with the heavier, the thicker acrylics. Um, they're a step up from craft acrylics. They're still... Um, they're not the professional paints, so they're not as expensive to get started with. So that's what I, if you know you're going to like, you just want to jump in and you're like, I'm doing this and I'm, I know I'm going to paint and I don't care how much I spend, you know, you can get the golden heavy body sets. Um, they have some different sets, but, um. So we're talking like dirty white and cad blue, those colors. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, really, those colors don't exist. No, they to don't. Any new people. Mark made that up. So titanium white, is, titanium white you need, for is sure. a must. Yeah, must. absolutely. Titanium okay. white is like you'll use the most of that, so you probably need two bottles. Um, some sort of uh, two reds. I would go with a warm red and a cool red. So like quinacridone, magenta, and uh, cadmium red light. And then you can mix those two to get a medium red. What? I was going to write that down because it's a common question, but yeah, I can't spit quinat quinacridone. <laughs> Quin, just put quin magenta. That's the warm one? That's a cool one. Cool one. That's purpley. Uh, then two blues that are uh, uh, a green blue and a purplish blue. So ultramarine blue is the purplish. Uh, thalo blue green shade is, is more greenish. Um, we'll do it after the show. <laughs> but go ahead. You can keep talking and let them know. Cadmium yellow medium is a good basic yellow. And uh, with those colors, you can kind of mix the others. You probably need like a, a yellow oxide and a burnt sienna. And then with a black, like a carbon black, you can mix pretty much all the other colors to start with. And then, you know, go from there. Okay. I'm going to mix a little bit of gray. I'm going to grab whatever this gray is. And I've got a hair in there. Don't want that in my mixed media piece here. <laughs> not, not doing mixed media tonight. Okay, and then down here we'll do our boat just slightly off center so that this sail is going to take up most of this room. So I think I will do it right like that. Uh, yeah, right about here, I think. And I'll go almost to the top and pull straight down. Here again, if you are concerned about getting this line straight, what you can do is dry your canvas completely and then use like a ruler. Set it down. I'm not going to set it down because this is wet, but you can set it straight down onto the canvas if this is dry and then just use your knife and go right along. You can see where I've gotten paint on it because I've set it down and just paint it right along it and it'll keep your line straight. So don't feel like that's cheating. That's just, you know, if you your hand shakes or, you know, you just have trouble con controlling it that's normal just use a little tool of some sort and make it a little bit easier for yourself there is no shame in that at all okay so we're doing a nice long one all the way down to about right here and then this boat is going to sit in the water right down here and it's a little bit more of the white color. And we'll kind of angle it up. I'm liking this shape. It's kind of a nice size. I forgot I had this one, so I was trying to do this with this rounded one, and it just didn't give me a good tip. So if you've got one that's got a really nice... Oh, look at that. <laughs> if you've got one that's... <laughs> this is normal. Sorry, if you're new, this is not anything that has not happened in the no, time. No, you don't have to dip the handle of your palette knife in your paint. No. That's not part of the it's, tutorial. It's not. It's not. Okay. Technically, I, I really need to speed this up because it was supposed yeah. to only be an hour long, and I'm taking forever because I'm... Would you stop answering stuff. questions and get on with it? <laughs> okay, so there we go. A little bit of that on there. Making sure again that this is horizontal right here. I think that looks pretty good. I'll grab a little bit of white. And actually, I'm going to scoop it this way on this side of it so that I can set this down and just kind of tap off some white. 
right here. I might put a little bit on this one, just slightly. We'll wipe most of that off. Let's grab this bright blue here. This is that light blue permanent and some white. Try not to get into my gray if I can help it. Scrape up this side. I want it on the front side so I can scrape this way and angle it down. I'm going to scrape in some water waves kind of underneath my boats here just a little bit. So a little bit of white in with my teal and then these other colors I'm just going to come right up up to my boat. I'm going to grab some thalo blue in there and I'm going to do some dark right up next to it too. gonna be messy don't worry about it it's supposed to be messy so just let it happen just go with it there we go all right then we get our other colors in here we'll add some other colors but I'm gonna scrape this down here there we go okay I'm going to use this and just scrape a line across this boat. It's got like a horizontal line in there. Maybe grab some of my black, see if I can get some darker color on there. There we go. Okay. It's going to feel like working with finger paints, you're right. You know, honey, that is a good analogy. It's going to feel really weird because it's just not something that you're normally used to doing. But um, it's actually, oh, thank you. I think I was off camera when I did the top of that one. Okay, so I'm going to do a long sail that kind of comes down here. And here again, I've got it loaded on this back side, and I'm just kind of barely tilting it toward the canvas so that it's just kind of dragging some of that paint off. Ooh. Turn it a little bit. I'm just going to pull it. To create that sail. When I get down close to the boat, I'm just going to start dragging it in toward it a little bit. And it's going to come kind of almost straight down here and curve in slightly. So just might change my palette knife to a smaller one. Turn this around and use the edge. Just kind of spread it on like frosting right there where I want it to go. It doesn't have to be super thick. It'll catch the texture underneath that we've already put on there too. So that's kind of nice when we're building up these other layers. There we go. Okay. Let's put another one over here. So we got a color question. Okay. Somebody's asked, you know, how do you choose the colors for the sails? You know, so that they complement each other. Is there I a trick or choose chose colors that I was using in the water and things, and then I added the red. Um, so all the rest of the colors that we'll use are mi are mixed from the colors that I've already used, and that's just a way that easy way to make sure that your your palette uh, harmonizes. Grab some black. Do some black across here. There's kind of a 
line. And I did darker colors underneath and then I'll do some light colors on top. So you notice that the these colors are not the colors that we're going to end up with. We're just kind of laying a foundation here. So I'm using this dark gray. Just scraping it on. A little space between the center line there. And I honestly don't mind if the background shows through a little bit here and there too, because it just kind of adds to it. So it's kind of got that imperfect thing we're looking for. Looks good. I'm going to have to bring that top up a little bit because I got it a little bit off there. And then this last one, I'm doing the dark side on this side, so if you notice all three of these sails will be a little bit darker on this side, and then on the opposite side I'll do some lighter color. Um, actually, I think I'm going to grab my credit card. I think that might be the easiest way to do it here. I'm going to scrape off that gray color. And we'll just use it right here. it down and scrape it. And just try to keep it in this kind of triangular shape. I mean honestly these sailboats are you know they sometimes you see on one side of them sometimes they've got both sails unfurled so you know you don't uh, just kind of go with it however you're you want to do yours is completely fine. It doesn't have to match mine. Okay, while well, I got this gray, I'm going to go ahead and put it on this side too. Might as well be a good undercoat for our red. Alrighty. Clean that off. Grab some teal. And I'm going to mix some of the white and light gray into it. I've got picked up a little bit of this white here and kind of scraped through the gray too to get some of that. So I have all of those colors on there. And we'll use it. I'm going to come down a little bit lower than I did the last time. paint on the wrong side so I'm going to pull that off and just scrape it onto this back side here where I want it. And since we have this paint underneath it's going to catch in weird places so don't be surprised if it doesn't want to lay down exactly flat on it. There we go. Turn it around. Go all the way to the edge there. Use some white. And use the tip to scrape it on. I mean, you can scrape it on and then you can just kind of go back in and sort of flatten it out a little bit. Whatever works, honestly. It's there we go. Right. Gives that nice texture. Let's put a little bit of this in our sail over here. I'm gonna use some of the cerulean blue and mix it with the phthalo blue and some of the teal. Make a darker teal color. And 
release some of that. There we go. Maybe use a little bit of it over here. This large sail I'm going to do with the unbleached titanium. I'm going to grab just a little bit of the burnt sienna, mix that in too. We'll start up here at the top. Oops, I'm kind of off camera there, sorry. And I did this one a little bit curved, so I can, if that freaks you out, just do it straight. It's fine. It doesn't have to be like mine. Whatever works for you. I'm going to grab some of that yellow that I had mixed up before, too. A little bit of that. And once I get it on, I kind of use the flat edge and just kind of barely scrape it. I don't, I don't have a lot of pressure on here, and I'm just kind of pushing it around a little bit to sort of flatten it out and shape it to where I want it to go. Okay. I'll bring it right up to that pole there. Let's use a little bit of this on this side. Just kind of outline it a little bit. Somebody's asked over here. if cerulean blue could be substituted for a different blue. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. You don't even have to have it all. You know, you could use. You could use whatever. Cerulean is just a kind of a little in between. It's like a little light, light green blue. So even a turquoise would work instead. If you have a turquoise color that you like. All right, I'm going to take some white over to my red here, and I'm going to mix a light red and try not to get too much of these other colors in it. So I use this bigger plate, and I'm already running out of room. It's just these paint spreads, so you may need a couple of plates for this if you want. I don't mind them merging a little bit, though, because it kind of part of the look is that sort of messy unpredictability. Okay, let's set that down. Scrape on some of this red. I'm going to use a tip and just draw it in there where I want it to go. Okay, that looks good. Now I'm going to use it a little bit in the water so that the water's got some of that reflected color. Just tiny little taps just to get off a little bit of paint. Let's use a little bit of it over here. And this one. A little bit in the water. Wipe it off. 
I'm going to grab some of that yellow and a little bit of my cerulean blue to make kind of a light yellow green color. Mostly yellow, just a little tiny bit of cerulean blue. It'll make this kind of yellowish green color. Spray my canvas. These are getting a little bit wet, dry. Okay. Now this is going to be wet, or this paint under here is going to be wet still. So we're not going to press down too hard. We're just going to kind of skim and it'll catch on these sails. There we go. Let's use some white. Create a lighter version of this color. Barely scraping it side to side. Get a little bit of it to come off on my the water. Make it look like reflections. For an hour. Okay. Sorry. What? That I drug it out on you. That's all right. Does that mean you're not going to do stick man again? It just means that we don't get closed captioning on the <sighs> video. Well, so I'm just going to say somebody mix started. Mixing teal and white. No, we're not. A, we're not an hour because we started ten minutes late. Oh, okay, good. So go faster, faster. Right, I'll try. I'll try. A little bit of that teal color in there. A little bit over here. We've already got it in the water, so it's not going to be as noticeable over here. Grab a little bit of the darker teal, maybe add a little bit of that. Whoa. Okay, maybe a little bit of that gray color. Put a little bit of that in the water. Just a little bit. Maybe a little over this side too. more of that gray and then there's some like lines and things that happen in this grab some dark black put a little bit more dark color top of that there's all these kind of little things that are coming across too, so you can kind of put a few little lines, ropes and things, I don't know. Hashtag boating facts. <laughs> ropes and lines and things. Done. Jibs and sails and you got it. knots. A little bit of black there. Well, you tell me when I'm off. And well, I was making up stuff. I can't make up stuff and watch the video too. <laughs> uh, okay. It's all right. How about zoom out? Zoom out. All right, I'll zoom out. We've got a lot of shininess. What? There we go. Okay. I feel like I need a little bit more white on this boat. Here. Got a little bit more. Oh, I do have. Look at all that blue. I'm, I think I ruined my white. It's gonna, that's going to stink. All right, I want this boat to be more white, so I'm just going to put a little bit of white on top here, except for it turned gray immediately because I had other colors on my palette knife. There we go. See, I'm very, very light. I'm just touching, barely, barely. 
I think that that's one of the things that is a little bit more tricky about this palette knife stuff is because you just have to really have a light touch to get it. All right, I think we are about there. There's a little bit of green in this one in mine, so I'm gonna mix a little bit of that green with this really blue and yellow color. And put a little bit of that in this sail here, just scraping up a little bit into that sail. Maybe put a little tiny bit over here. Tiny bit in the water. Our water is getting very multicolored over here. <laughs> <laughs> if it gets a little too much of one color, you can always go back in with, with your darker color and scrape in some lines in the, with the darker too. So don't feel like, you know, it's a lost cause if you've covered it with other colors like I've got here. Go back in with some of that yellow blue and scrape back in some color. I think we're good. What do you think, honey? Pretty cool. Looks fantastic Different. to me. Yeah. yeah, I like it. You know, I like trying something new every now and then. I'll use a little bit of this white up here at the top. Just put a little bit of it. Gray color up there. Fussy, fussy, fussy. Fussy. Okay, I'll stop fussing. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stop. <laughs> Good enough. Good enough. And I'm going to say that's good for tonight. I'm sorry, we're not going to do Stickman yet again. I will, I promise, promise, promise we'll do it next time. But um, I want to thank our sponsor, Audible, for sponsoring this video. And if you're interested in checking out their service, you can click on that link, audible.com slash Angela Fine Art. That's down in the description. You get a 30-day free trial and a free book. So uh, thanks, guys, for watching. Give a thumbs up. Leave a comment. We always like to hear from you. And we will see you on Saturday for a special collaboration with Cinnamon Cooney and another artist that's doing uh, clay. Her name is Stephanie Kilgast. And we're going to be doing a jungle theme for uh, Earth Day. So check that out on Saturday. Thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs>